there's a certain amount that you can control. Right. In any poverty state, there's a certain amount you can control. Some stuff you might not be able to control. When the tornado comes whipping through your neighborhood and, and your house gets blown down and somehow you didn't have insurance and you lose everything, you can't control that. But you can certainly control how you're going to react to that situation. You, if you can become aware of your reactivity, then you can respond to it more easily rather than just repeat the reactions. Because the house is always going to get knocked down. That's part of life. The house get knocks, it gets knocked down. There's just no way out of that. There is no way out of it. But sometimes because the house gets house... knocked down in a really extreme way. Well, it's true. But if you will think about all the times that your houses have gotten knocked down in your life, yes, they are actually the transformative moments. Right. Right. That kind of brings us to the idea to something that you have been dealing with for four years now, which is that you have stage four bone cancer, metastatic breast cancer, metastatic breast cancer. And this is an extreme, extreme version of a tornado knocking a house down because four years ago you called to tell us that you had six months to live. I have been told that at least a dozen times. A dozen times that you've had six months to live. I have been told to call a crematorium and find out how much it would cost to be cremated because I had maybe a month or six weeks and that I needed to know that so that I could pay the money up front before I died. And I have made the call to the crematorium and I found out that it was $750. Thank you very much. Wow. God, that is so fucked. But I have, it seems like cancer is pretty popular these days. And I know, you know, many people are, have, get, are getting afflicted with cancer. Right. And I always like talk about you, your situation, because sitting across from you, you have a terminal prognosis. Um, and you look better than before you had cancer. You look healthy. You're focused. You're, you seem better. Now, what is that? What, 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 how, how do you explain that under the bur under this burden? Cause I can't, I mean, just knowing that you have, this has been a darkening experience for me and it's been its own incredible challenge for me to assimilate it and deal with it. It's been very hard, of course, mm -hmm. but for you, how do you, how do you, how have you managed to transform something that when people hear that, they're like, fuck it, I'm going to start smoking, drinking, taking narcotics and just die. How have you been so courageous and what are you doing? What's, what's your secret in all this? Well, that's a really good question. And, um, I have, first of all, I listened to the, Western medical doctors with one eyebrow raised because these are the people that have told me that I was going to die right away. And I have looked for alternatives. I've looked to see what I have been eating that was incorrect and I've changed it. I've looked to see what emotional stressors were in my life and I've worked to um, lessen those. And I've looked at my environment, my uh, physical surroundings, and I've done everything that I could do to enhance that. And I do intense spiritual work all the time. So ultimately, when you hear stage four cancer, the word death comes to mind. Yes. And it comes to mind for me too. And so one of the major things that I've done is inquire into what that word means to me and inquire into what kind of relationship I have with that idea and what it, what it actually, uh, how it impacts me to consider dying. Right. And to make peace with um, the fact that there are parts of that that I don't have any control over and there are parts of it that I do have control over. In other words, the diet and the stress and those yes. kinds of things, I can change and make more optimal. The 
possibility that there is some kind of force that um, will take us out when it's time to go out is nothing that I can do anything about. Right. So I may as well make peace with it. Right. It's easier to go with the flow of that particular river than it is to try to fight it. That there is that possibility. We're all going to die. I know. And that, that, how much do you think in relation to what we were talking about earlier about how much when you were a child, uh, the early experiences affect the rest of your life. How much do you think that that realization that many people seem to be trying to hide from that we are all going to die? How much does that impact people's behavior and actions? Well, I think that my own uh, relationship to death and dying that I have come to at this point in my life has nothing to do with anything I learned from my family of origin. Right. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And this is that saying, and I don't know where it comes from, but that meditation is preparation for death. I think that's true. And meditation is one spiritual practice that prepares us for death. But also, you know, you just, if you look at the world, what you see is things appearing and disappearing. And humans are a part of the whole of that. And humans appear and they disappear Mm. off the face of the earth. That just happens. You know, our egos personalize it and and we consider ourselves special cases. Yes. But we're really not. You know? We're, we're, we are, are part of the whole, and everything in the whole transforms all the time. Changes form, transfigures. You're a special case. <laughs> it's because I'm your mama. <laughs> no. No, this, I know this transfigure. I know, I know, I know, but come on. There's no way to stop the heartbreak. How do you, what do you do about that? You cry. You cry. You're listening to the Duncan Trussell Family Hour. It's located on the iTunes comedy section. <laughs> Very funny podcast. It's really hard. But it's definitely something everyone's got to, you know, deal with. Yeah. And it's such a strange thing. I mean, you, the universe, it, 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 it seems so stable. Mm-hmm. If you are, you know, in this kind of automatic state. Mm-hmm. And, and and the encounter with truth, which for me, you dying, you're dying, this thing has been probably the greatest run in with truth that I've had in my whole life. I mean, you can't really, it's inexpressible. Yeah. But it's not like it makes you feel, this, this is not a feeling of like, this is not a desirable feeling. No. But it's a feeling that every single human being will experience one way or the other. It is. But so much, so many of us are spending so much time engaged in just ridiculous activities, it seems like, just to try to avoid this experience. Exactly. People really try to avoid the consideration that they are going to die and the people they love are going to die.
but it seems like that oriental rug that we're talking about there, that that is the key Mm -hmm. to everything. Yes. As terrible a key as that is, it feels like once you realize that, it's so hard to be closed off. What, like, why would you be like that? Why would you close off? Yes. Right. So that is the key. That is the key because it opens your heart. It breaks your heart open. Yes. You know, our hearts have been closed because we've closed them. We've defended ourselves against pain. And this it, is the kind of things that, that opens them. Opening your heart sucks. This it is hurts. the thing, like, you know, this is the thing Ram Dass talks about all that. It hurts. It Does hurts. it always hurt? Does I, opening your heart always just hurt? Or are you just in a constant state of? No, it doesn't always hurt. But when it really cracks open, it hurts, you know, and it does. But even the hurt transforms because if you inquire into the hurt, you know what you're experiencing is love. Right. The real deal. You right. Know, you I know can see love. that. Yeah. It's very, it, it, it's, uh, Yeah, it's, yeah, right, because it's seeing newness. It's seeing the how, how much you value life. Yes, and the reason I look better now than I ever have is because I am more fully living. Right. Because I'm living and dying consciously. Simultaneously, I'm holding both. What, what advice would you give to people out there who are dealing with this very thing? I would tell them to cry when they need to cry and to turn toward this thing that's called death. Turn toward it. And even if you're afraid to turn toward it, turn toward it. It won't hurt you. And... See what it has to teach you. It's a tremendous teacher, free of charge. I don't think it'd be sell a lot of goddamn tickets if it was trying to. That's <laughs> <laughs> a show I'm going to skip if I can. <laughs> uh, wow. But it's a teacher. I mean, it's we're talking about teachers. It's a real it's the real deal. Yes. And you know what I find is that um, the uh, closer I get to physical death, the more alive I feel and the more present I feel and the more real I am. And I realize that I have no idea what lies on the other side of physical death, but that there is so much aliveness that's building in me that I can't help but think there is some connection between that and the movement toward physical death. Yeah, well... I, I don't yeah. can't explain that. I don't have an explanation for that. Well... Yeah, no, nobody knows. I, 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 from my limited experience with it, I definitely, and from run-ins with people who seem to be quite advanced, it's more like a surprise party than it is a car accident, I think. But we can never know that. We cannot know. And we can't know, you know, we can't know what our own death is going to be like. But I do think that we suffer more if we resist that flow of the river. Right. It's always flowing. That if we if we try to get over there to the side, 
so that we can get on the bank and be exempt from the flow, that's where we begin to suffer right. more and more. It's just letting go into that thing. Yes. And the amazing thing about letting go into it is that you find that this thing called love is supportive, that it holds us. It has a quality of benevolence that we might have never noticed. And we ask, what's that? What is it that has a quality of benevolence? And the only word that I can come up with is reality. Reality actually has this quality of benevolence. Yes. Right. Yes. And even benevolence is is a not is a very small word for what it is, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes. It's just like it's just so intense. You know how um uh people with autism have all these defensive reactions because they're experiencing so much more of the world. Uh-huh. I think that humans have are autistic in their own way in the sense that the this experience of love energy is so powerful that to combat against it we build an entire life an entire ego to try to not feel it because yes. it's just so overwhelming it is it's a killer it's ego death yeah not desirable it is desirable and that's why it hurts it's ego death your heart cracks open and your ego is dying. Right. But you find that ego death is a transfiguration. It's an alchemical transfiguration. Yes. Because, yeah, who wants to carry around this fucking weight? You don't. I don't. Well, I love you very much, obviously. I love you, too. And, and Duncan, that kind of love isn't going anywhere. That's another thing you find, that I may leave this plane of existence sooner rather than later, but the love isn't going anywhere. I'm as certain of that as I am of anything. Right. I believe you. Let's cut to a commercial. 